Myth number one, the best toasts are improvised. No, 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 they're not. <laughs> Although spontaneity has its charm, a memorable toast usually has some prep behind it. It's about striking the right balance between preparation and natural flair. Myth number two. Hey Patty, I'm in a bit of a bind here and I could really use your help. My sister's wedding is coming up and she's asked me to give a toast to me. Yes, I'm touched and I want to do this for her, but the idea of standing up in front of a crowd is freaking me out. I'm not just nervous, I'm terrified. I haven't said yes yet, so that's why I wanted to come to you to help me through this decision because I've never been good at public speaking. I got anxious, my hands shook, and I even lost my train of thought. Now thinking about doing this at my sister's wedding in front of hundreds of people where I want everything to be perfect for her is keeping me up at night. I know people say that everyone gets a bit nervous about public speaking, but for me, it feels like a massive mountain to climb. I keep imagining myself getting up there, words getting jumbled, or worse, my mind going completely blank. I don't want to embarrass myself, or more importantly, let my sister down on one of the most important days of her life. I've heard that you're good at giving toasts and that you've helped others in similar situations. Any advice or tips or encouragement you could offer would be a lifesaver. How do you manage the nerves? And how do you prepare in a way that feels natural and not forced. I really want to say yes to delivering this toast that's heartfelt and makes my sister's day even more special. Thank you so much for even reading this. Thank you. <laughs> hello, dear friend. And hello, dear Cynthia. Thank you so much for sharing the letter with me at pattypassjourney.com and for trusting me to help you find a solution to your toast giving dilemma. Yes, yes, you can do it. Bear with me. I'll share everything that I know about giving a toast. And I really hope that I managed to convince you that you can do it. You can give the toast at your sister's wedding. You don't need to say no. You got this. Okay, but before we get to that, ah, oh, the trauma. Let's be honest here. Most of us have already had a moment where we were asked to say something. We were asked to stand in front of a crowd and give a toast in front of other humans, right? Then the room went silent. All eyes on you and your mind just went blank. It happened to me many times, my entire life actually. Being asked to stand up and speak in front of a crowd can turn a fun occasion into an exam you didn't study for. But what if I told you that there's a way to flip the script? What if you could be the one to deliver a toast that's not just good but unforgettable? A real mic drop moment where everyone is in awe of you. <laughs> Before we get started. What is a toast? A toast is more than just words you say before we drink. You don't just grab a glass of wine and say, cheers. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not how we roll. No. Yes, it is a cheer, but it's also a story, a wish, all rolled into one. Shared with a crowd in celebration of someone or something. If you behave, I just might share a toast with you after this video so that I can show you how it's done. But before we even get started, I have to bust three myths that aren't doing us any favors. I want to clear that out of the way right now. Myth number one, the best toasts are improvised. No, 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 they're not. 
all the spontaneity has its charm. Uh, a memorable toast usually has some prep behind it. It's about striking the right balance between preparation and natural flair. Myth number two, longer is better. Actually, when it comes to giving a toast, shorter always does the trick. It's about making a point, making it resonate, and then wrapping it up before people get impatient. And myth number three, you need to be born with it. Some individuals think that good toast givers are born, not made. It is a lie. It's a lie. Don't listen to it. Like any skill, getting a great toast can be learned. With practice and a few insider tips, anyone can wow a crowd. Whether you're like Cynthia, resting with your nerves, or simply looking to polish your skills, stick with me, girlfriend. Stick with me. I'll take you from panic to poise and from nervous to natural. Are you ready? Let's get to it. Tip number one, start early and do not wing it, please. Begin preparing your toast well in advance. I remember dreading speaking in public so much that even all the way back to elementary school, when I had to deliver an oral presentation, I would avoid preparing for it as long as possible because even practicing was causing me anxiety. Basically, I just avoided it and remained in denial until the last minute. However, delaying because of anxiety will only increase your stress. Getting a head start avoids the last minute rush and the temptation to improvise, which can lead to a disaster. Tip number two, start with an attention grabbing hook. Start with something that will immediately draw everyone's attention. You want to make them forget about their phone, their next drink or the dessert table. Let me demonstrate this to you. So don't do this. I, okay, let's just say your sister's name is Barbara. I am Barbara's sister. And on behalf of my family, I want to thank everyone for coming here today. It means a lot to us that you would come here to celebrate this special day. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. <laughs> Do this instead. Hello, I'm Barbara's youngest sister. Her partner in crime st since childhood. Without her, I might not have made it to graduation. Now she's teaming up with Bob for their biggest adventure yet, marriage. As Ed Tate would say, no preamble, no pre-ramble. Just jump right in. Tip number three, keep it short and sweet. So we busted that myth already. We've all attended events where we had an auntie or an uncle that went on and on and on for 30 minute monologue. It was a horrific experience. Don't do it. Don't be that auntie or that uncle, I beg you. Aim for a toast that's no more than three to five minutes long. Shorter speeches are easy to remember, first of all, and they keep the audience engaged. Share some stories, stick to a theme, and don't be all over the place. And one more thing, no roasting. I know we see sometimes some pranks or whatever on social media. If you want to say something that you know will embarrass, the person you're toasting to, don't do it. Don't do it. Play nice, okay? Focus on your sister and her partner. Keep it light, keep it fun, and most importantly, keep it kind. To help you to stay brief and concise, let's move on to tip number four. Use a cheat sheet. <laughs> There's no rule that says that you, that you cannot bring one. So outline your toast with a few bullet points and don't be shy to, to bring it. See it as a safety net that can help you stay calm in case you panic. You can look down and be rescued by the bullets. For example, you can say, I'm going to share three things you didn't know about my sister. Or I'm going to tell you three things you didn't know about their first date or about the proposal, whatever you want. Whatever you do, do not read it word for word. That will prevent you from connecting with your audience it's about the eye contact, the smiles, 
and the moments that make your toes feel like you're sharing stories with friends, not giving a lecture. Number five, rehearse with tools. So many tools available to you. Transform your phone or your laptop into a personal rehearsal studio. Or do what I do, jump on a Zoom call with yourself and push record. These tools are your ticket to rehearsing effectively, trust me. It will be cringy, very likely, but you have to record yourself and watch yourself. I cannot emphasize this enough. You'll get a front row seat to your own performance and you'll be able to pinpoint exactly what it is you need to work on to enhance your skills. Pretend like you're somebody in the audience and pay attention to what you say. Telling you, you'll be noticing filler words. I'm very big on so and you know. Some people, they say like, um, uh, 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 like you'll see, it's pretty horrifying. When you look at yourself, pay attention so you can practice, practice, practice until you get rid of them. Work on a crisp, clear pronunciation and make sure your voice is strong and steady, but you're not going to be like, <laughs> and people are going to be screaming, stop louder. You don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, you want to be able to have a strong and steady voice, but you have to practice to make sure. So. Record, watch, listen, adjust, then do it all over again. And keep tweaking and practicing until you nail the, the delivery a few times in a row and you'll be confident, you'll know. You know when you want to clap at your own self? <laughs> you want to do that. You want, you want to get to that point. Now, some tips to help you deal with the nerves. The nerves. Oh. Tip number six. Visualize your mic drop moment. Yes. See yourself right there in the reception hall or the restaurant, wherever you are, delivering a successful toast. Your final words are landing just right. The room is lit up with smiles and laughter. Envision the loud applauses, feel the energy. That's your cue for the perfect imaginary mic drop moment. Woo. <laughs> it's not just about finishing. It's about leaving the crowd wanting more. Tip number seven, breathe into confidence. Yes. So you want to master the breath, first of all. One helpful technique is called diaphragmatic breathing. So it goes like this. You have to inhale deeply through your nose, feeling your belly expand. You're not just filling your lungs, you're charging up with calm. And then you want to exhale slowly through your mouth, pushing out all the air. Try it with me. Nobody's watching you. You got this. Inhale. Exhale. It does feel good. <laughs> Practice this quiet ritual before your moment in the spotlight. It's a simple act, but it brings huge results. A serene mind and a steady voice. And also, if ever you panic at one point in the middle of your speech or your toes and you, you lose your way, do it too. Breathe in, out, and then proceed. You should have a clear mind by then. 17. The power of a smile. Flash a genuine smile as you step up on the stage. It's like flipping a switch that lights up the room and your confidence. Lock eyes with a few friendly faces out there. Their silent support is a powerful anchor, rooting you in the moment. Hey, you're not alone up there. A lot of people who want you to do well, so smile at them. It'll also relax the atmosphere a lot. Tip number eight, don't rush your delivery and use pauses. Pace yourself and include pauses, allowing the audience to absorb your words and react to your jokes. If you're too fast, you'll just be stepping on the laughs and your people just won't get what you're saying. So that'll be a huge missed opportunity to connect with them. Let me illustrate the difference to you. So without pauses, you know, marriage is like a deck of cards. In the beginning, all you need is two hearts and a diamond, but after a while, you're looking for a club and a spade. It's not funny when you go through it quickly, but with proper pauses, you know, marriage is like a deck of cards. In the beginning, all you need is two hearts and a diamond, but after a while, you're looking for a club and a spade. <laughs> 
This joke relies on the surprise shift from romance to a touch of humor about the trials of marriage, making the timing of the pauses crucial for the punchline to land effectively. Don't rush through it, please. Tip number nine, embrace your unique charm. Remember, you were the one who was chosen for this moment, not your brother, your aunt, or your friend. She asked you. So whether you're goofy, serious, or a mix of both, just bring your true self. Don't try to be somebody that you're not. It took me a little while for me to, when I started speaking up, I was going to kind of character, but now the more I'm speaking, the more I'm able to be myself. And that's my unique charm. I'm the only one who can be myself. See this as your gift to the couple and the crowd. Hey, they're gathered to have a good time, not to judge you. The pressure is not on you, even if you feel the stress and you're even hesitating about giving the speech, but um, everybody's here for the love story and with you as a storyteller. Tip number 10, seal it with a toast. Once you've shared your anecdotes and won the crowd, it's time for the grand finale, the toast. That's what we're waiting for. So raise your glass high, give a nod to the couple and offer a toast that is both heartfelt and hopeful to Bob and Barbara. As you embark on life's greatest adventure together, may you always find your way back to each other's arms. Let's toast to love, laughter, and a lifetime of happiness. May every chapter be better than the last. To Bob and Barbara. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Cynthia and your girlfriend. That's a wrap on our Toast Masterclass. I hope these tips give you the edge to deliver a toast that is unforgettable. Remember, it's about crafting a moment that resonates and brings a bit of light and magic to the occasion. If you know someone who has to deliver a toast anytime soon, why not share this video with them? Share, spread the love. And if you, found, if you found something useful, got a good laugh here, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more no-nonsense tips and advice. Let's just raise, raise our glasses for Cynthia, for you, brave toaster out there, and for the stories that are yet to be told and tell us how it goes in the comments. <laughs> Until next time, keep those glasses raised and your stories ready. Cheers. <laughs>